In this episode, I talk with Sharon Sheldon about her creative white label online course business. Welcome to the Online Course Coach Podcast, brought to you by TrueFocusMedia.com. Whether you're a beginner or expert, this is the podcast for the latest in online course creation tips, news, interviews, and ideas. And here's your coach, Jeff Long. Welcome back to another episode of the Online Course Coach Podcast. And this is a no-hype podcast where we talk honestly about effective online course strategies. So every week we're talking with uh, either an industry leader or I'm giving some uh, valuable content. So it might be about course planning or course creation or the marketing aspect of courses or anything in between. This podcast gives you helpful strategies. And like I said, it's a no hype podcast. I'm not here to, um, I don't know, sell the latest and greatest or do this joint venture that you're getting bombarded with emails. Uh, I really want it to be an honest, authentic conversation with other honest, authentic people. And I know you'll, you'll get that as I talk with Sharon today. Well, hey, before we get into the podcast, I want to uh, let you know of the resources page. If you haven't gone there yet, I have quite a few resources I've given out over the, you know, all the podcasts and all the videos I've done. And I decided it would be helpful to put those all on a resources page. So if you go to online coachcom forward slash resources, you can find out which of those resources work best for you, are the most helpful, and will give you the most uh, information to take your course uh, to that next level. Now, I want to read a recent iTunes review. This is from Sharon S. And that's oddly enough, that is not from the interview person we did today uh, because this, uh, this rating and review came in before I met Sharon. Uh, of course, I guess she could have, uh, you know, uh, read it or excuse me, uh, written it in before I met her. But anyway, uh, she said, Jeff's podcast has been informative and inspiring for me throughout my process of creating my Spanish courses. Great mix of tips for business, production, and educational strategies, as well as encouragement. Thank you, Jeff. So Sharon, thank you for writing that uh, iTunes rating and review. That does encourage me, and it helps a podcast get a little more eyeballs, or maybe it's ears, uh, so more people can uh, be aware of it, listen to it, and benefit from the content. So thank you much, uh, Sharon. And to you, the listener, you can go to onlinecoursecoach.com forward slash iTunes and leave a rating and review. And lastly, this podcast is brought to you by Easy Video for Courses. If you've been listening to this podcast for a while, you know how important uh, videos are for your courses. You know, they, they have to be effective. They have to be helpful. They can't just be thrown together. And so, like I said in the past, Online courses that include video are 83% more effective in helping the students remember the information. But we all know, you know, creating courses is hard. Uh, Creating effective courses is even harder. You know, a lot of people struggle with the confusing equipment or the expensive software, or maybe they don't know the right equipment to buy and they don't want to waste that money buying the wrong equipment. And then it's, you know, how do I edit the videos or can I use my smartphone or I want to be on camera, but I don't feel confident. So I took all those fears and those struggles and that's why I created easy video for courses. I've taken all that confusion out of the process. So you don't have to waste time or money or stress or, you know, all the things that come with creating those course videos. I've made a process for you. I've taken my decade over a decade, almost 15 years experience and will help shortcut that for you. So even if you don't like being on camera, I give some tips and tricks on how to create effective course videos, whether you're on camera or not on camera. And all you have to do is go to Easy Video for Courses to learn more and to get the course. Well, today's uh, interview is really interesting because I met Sharon Sheldon at on at uh, Social Media Marketing World, excuse me, and we struck up struck up several conversations because she has quite a unique business model. You know, most course creators they create a course for themselves and they sell it to their audience, or maybe they are uh, contracted to create it for a company and that company sells it to their audience. But what 
uh, Sharon does is very unique. She cre- Great to be here. So bring us up to speed. We'll talk about where you are now, but give us a little background about where you've been. Okay. Well, um, I have kind of a mixed background. Uh, I started out in college doing Chinese studies of all things. So I spent some time in Shanghai way back when, when there were no Western hotels, no Westerners. And now I'm going to start dating myself here. (laughs) So, um, yeah, I did Chinese and then eventually did some, some jobs here and there and ended up going to business school and going into investment banking of all things, which I absolutely hated it was just completely the wrong place for me. I don't know. You know how you set a goal and now she for yourself uses her sometimes business and you just and keep at it and keep at it. To create even the high value it's wrong, premium content that our just customers because, need to shine a you know, you spotlight on their expertise you get there. and fire Well, I got there and I said, oh my so, God, Sharon, I can't thanks so much I for being this. This is so wrong for me. And what I really loved was learning. And I found out there was this – the kind of new industry at that point. Training and development had been around for a while – but um, things were getting much more strategic at that point. And I ended up joining a consulting company that, where they were doing learning consulting for big companies. So I was working as a consultant with places like um, Merrill Lynch and MetLife and UBS and JP Morgan, places like that, a lot of financial but, and, and insurance. And, but other things like AT&T, um, well, customer service, stuff like that. And I really loved that. It was designing learning solutions at a strategic level. So that was really where my course creation started and developing blended learning. So with different types of solutions, you know, live and self-study and gradually the online became more and more part of it. Um, But then an event happened, which was 9-11, which kind of changed my view. I'd been kind of, I'd been just sort of going along as a consultant, getting projects. Really, not my life wasn't in my control. The business I was getting coming to me, and I was actually down there at the World Trade Center on 9/11, and walking up the highway uh, as we were leaving uh, after we were evacuated. I was in a building across the street. I just looked and I said, "This is crazy." You know, none of this is under my control where I am. I don't want to be here. And I kept going for a while because it was sort of easy money as a consultant in a lot of ways. Um, but I knew I was going to have to make a change. And uh, as my kids got older, I knew I needed to do something where I could be in charge, where I could live and work from anywhere in the world and enjoy myself, have a good time with my business. And That's when the online marketing really was taking off or content marketing. And I, you know, when things were a lull, I went and did a course, a whole workshop on how to do online marketing and content marketing. It was the days where you just picked a keyword and developed a blog on that keyword, you know, in the title and everything. It was, and I, I played around and learned a lot on that. It was never really very successful because I was straying away from my roots too much. And um, I, that's when I came across this thing called PLR, private label rights. And it had a pretty bad reputation. The quality was really bad. But these, this was content that you could take and put your own name on and do whatever you wanted with it. And in those days, people did. Content marketing was just loading up content on your site and constantly having something new. It didn't really matter what the quality was. But I could never publish something that that didn't wasn't high quality. I was way too particular about how things were written. But I saw the opportunity there and I decided to get into it and do my own twist on it and use some of my experience. And that's really where my business started taking off was using that. Yeah. Yeah. And I love that. Uh, Steve Jobs mm-hmm. says something like, you know, you, it's, it's hard to connect the dots when you're looking ahead, you know, to, to plan the right moves and know where to go and what to do. But as you look back in your life, you see those dots and how they connected and how they brought you to where you are today. So it's very interesting to, to hear that perspective. So when you're meeting people, like kind of like we met, you know, at the conference a couple of weeks ago, 
Do you have mm-hmm. like a, an elevator pitch or a, you know, a short, concise version of, of your services or what you do? Uh, it's always really hard to explain. <laughs> <laughs> right. And that's why I asked. I was wondering, you know, if there's a, an easy way to describe it or. <laughs> well, the way I, I was just in a course recently, <clears throat> excuse me, where I was learning about um, the importance of saying why why you're in the business. So typically with an elevator speech, you know, okay, this is what I do. But really my why is that coaches, consultants, small business owners shouldn't have to waste time creating course content when they can be directly helping their clients and sharing their expertise. They don't necessarily have the expertise in creating courses. So instead they can benefit from our team. We have 25 plus years of creating professional training company uh, training programs for big companies and small businesses. So we provide all the materials needed to teach the courses. And then all you have to do is tailor it for your market and add your name, branding, inject your own unique voice and insights and not spend that time. So I'm helping you help others. Yeah. And spreading the word even more so that you can help more and more people and spend the time doing what you do best. Talk to me about the process that you take. You know, how do you find out or how do you find what courses to create or, or clients to, to get or, how, you know, how, how are you getting that even before you create the content? What's your process like? Well, actually, picking topics is always a big challenge. And I start now, because I have a a big customer base now, I start with customer requests. I'm always asking people, you know, what topics do you want to see? What do your customers need? Because I'm not, it's not my customers who are doing the learning, it's their customers. So I have to be looking one step beyond. So I'm always asking them, what do you want? What do you want? Now, of course, the loudest people are the ones I hear and they don't necessarily represent the majority. So that's always a little dangerous. So I also look at what's sold well in the past and then what's being talked about a lot online. So what are the hot topics? What are a lot of people already creating courses on? So I know that these are things that people want, you know, that their customers, and then I can tell my customers, look, people are creating courses on this. So we already know that it's a topic that's proven. And then there's always just the basics. The basics don't change of what people need to know. You need to know how to create an ideal customer profile. Everyone needs to do that. So I know I have to have courses on those sorts of things. And I'm always also trying to focus on evergreen topics because I'm selling a license to something that I want to have last a while and I want my customers to be able to keep selling those and using them over and over I focus on evergreen. So I'm not going to do a training on WordPress and how to use WordPress because it changes every month. (laughs) (laughs) You know, Facebook ads, I I just, I won't do it partly because it changes every month and partly because you really have to know what you're talking about if you're going to train on something like that where people are, are investing their money based on your advice. Yeah. So I'm careful about that as well. Well, how long are your lessons and modules and content? And same thing with the the listener. What's a a good rule of thumb? You know, how long should each lesson or video or content be and and why? Well, I'm very big on bite size. Mm. (laughs) So bite size pieces, bite size uh, videos, things like that. So bite size video to me could be anything from two minutes to you know, five, six, seven, most lessons I wouldn't say uh, for a video shouldn't be more than say 10 minutes, just because people start losing focus. And I prefer to keep it less than that, more like five or six minutes. And, you know, one key point um, in a module itself, three to five. So a module can have multiple lessons in it. So the terminology really depends on, you know, call it a lecture, call it a module, whatever. But um, each one should have maybe three to five points. And, and people can't retain more than that easily. They just, you know, you start to forget what was being said and can't implement it. And, and if somebody that can't get a quick win and really see a result after each lesson, then they're going to start losing their motivation also. 
So also the whatever activity you're giving them shouldn't take more than say 15 to minutes to half an hour. Now that's a broad generalization because if it's anything like you know doing some research easily people can get go into an hour or more mm-hmm. of doing all that or you know if it's setting something up but trying to keep that really short 15 minutes half an hour an hour max for the actual activity but when they're um, watching a video or reading that five minute thing on the video is what I aim for yeah. now that's online I'm assuming we're just talking about online correct primarily yeah yeah, because if it's in person and you're, um, and this is a good, uh, another good thing for slides is if you're doing it on something like a webinar, I don't like spending more than a minute or two per slide before moving on and not talking for more than, say, um, 15 minutes, 10 minutes before asking a question and getting some interaction. And you know what? It's really boring to talk for that long, too. (laughs) (laughs) As the person doing the talking, I don't know how people just talk for an hour on on something without any interaction at all. I've done it because when you do a webinar that's more promo webinar and you don't have people involved, you have to. But wow, it's, it's rough. Now, one of my favorite topics to talk about is marketing because, you know, you can create a a robust course, a highly valuable course. Maybe it's one of the best courses in the whole world, but if nobody knows about it, then it's not going to be successful. So what are some marketing strategies that you've done over the years that have been effective? Well, I have to say that the the way I really got my first big break where I really took off was from referrals. So I had an affiliate program set up And I networked a bit with other people who were selling similar things because everyone kind of promotes each other in this particular world. And one one of the people who has a big, uh, big following, similar type of stuff, um, looked at my content and said, hey, I want to I want to refer people to you. Signed up as an affiliate. You know, suddenly I had an initial audience. And once you have that initial audience, you can keep growing. So the referrals were really how I got started, even though it's expensive because you're paying a big commission. But then from there, the key things that I um, that work for me are number one, email marketing, absolutely the biggest way. Uh, if I didn't have an email list, the, you know, firstly, if I with my email list, my whole business could go away and I could start over again easily because I build up that relationship with them. They trust me. They trust the content I create. I'm always trying to teach them more things. So email marketing is number one. If you can start building a list, even if you have nothing to sell, that's key. And with that, hand in hand goes content marketing. So teaching people, educating them. And, you know, people who are creating courses, it's a natural to start doing content marketing, other things that are teaching, not just some random content out there, but things that get results. And then um, I rebranded about three years ago from getting away from the PLR to to what I am now, Content Sparks. And I started a Facebook group then just for my customers. And that's been a big help. So just getting um, repeat sales from current customers and helping them, teaching them, building that relationship with them. So it's always easier to sell more to who the customers you already have, and it's essential to yeah. to keep that relationship. So um, other things that I've done um, when I've done new courses of my own, getting people onto a waiting list. So even if I hadn't created it yet, just to see whether it was something they wanted. So I know that's not a direct marketing strategy, but that's a way to test the idea and also build the buzz so that then when the course was ready, I was making sales from day one. Absolutely. Yeah. No, I think that's, well, it's Mm pre-marketing in a way, you know, it's, it's getting the interest Are enough people interested in this, then you can send surveys. Hey, I'm thinking about talking about A, B, and C, which interests you more and, and things like that. So it's it's effectively making better courses throughout the process. Mm-hmm. Exactly. What would you say is the process you use when you want to quickly create courses? And do you mm-hmm. have a process for that? Well, I talked about 
some of the process before of what we do. So ours is not that quick a process, yeah. but if you want to do it really quickly, the key is to start um, with that high level outline and teach from there without filling in, um, you know, writing up a lot of the stuff. So the key is really testing your idea first, but you know, the speed also is in that first bit of research and design. So whenever we jump too fast ahead to the actual creation of the course without doing a good job on the learning objectives and the design, we end up wasting time mm. because we have to go back and say, oh, okay, well, this wasn't logical to start with. So, you know, it wasn't realistic or actionable. So you waste time if you don't do that groundwork. But yeah. you don't have to write in all the details if you know the topic. You can start with just an outline and a slideshow with a few bullet points and go and and teach it from there. Teach it live and then use a transcript. Um, record a video just using your bullet points and see how people respond to it. So that's another thing that saves a lot of time. And then gradually add on. You don't have to have everything done. Yeah. straight from the beginning. You can just have one module of a course that people will get results from yeah. and then build on from there. So I think that's one of the mistakes that a lot of people make is they're trying to do everything and make some enormous course that covers every single topic. <laughs> and then they never get it online yeah. because it's never done. <laughs> and I think that's, well, I know that that's a liberating thought. You know, a lot of times when I'm coaching uh, students on this process, you know, we go over that same thing and, and yeah, they may have a, a an idea for, you know, a hundred lessons. It's like, no, like, let's take the ten, top 10, you know, ideas that we can convey. And like you said, maybe just create some simple content to get some traction, momentum, some interest uh, before building out. And, and another strategy is building different, you know, a, a 101 series, 201, 301, 401, you know, mm -hmm. um, the education sector, uh, colleges, universities have been doing it for so long. And a lot of times course creators forget to look at what's been done in the past and what is effective. Right. And, and so most people don't, strategies. yeah. And most people don't have the time to do something big. You know, the feedback I yeah. get now is I don't want to sign up for a you know 10 part webinar series. I don't <laughs> have the time to do it. Not going to see the results, but one thing to start with where you really can see a result is going to be much more effective and people are going to come back for more. Absolutely. Yeah. So just saying, okay, whatever it takes to get started. Exactly. Is the key. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Now, what would you tell somebody that's maybe created a course, uh, but they just haven't gotten the results that they were hoping for? You know, is there hope for that person <laughs> or what would you tell them? Um, well, in terms of results, there are really two types of results you should be thinking about. One is obviously the monetary, you know, are you making enough sales? And the other is student success and results in the course. And the two are very closely tied together because if somebody isn't actually getting results from your course, then you're not going to have any testimonials or, you know, case studies. And those are the things sure. that affect the actual sales of future. So having that good course to start with and making sure that, um, number one, it's realistic to achieve and you're doing the actionable activities and giving tools, um, making sure you know you get feedback and you act on it. So what do you need to change? Your first course you put up there is not going to be necessarily some big success. And usually it isn't. It's you need to get that initial feedback to see what people need and where you need to adjust. And then making sure it's successful starts with adding support, you know, group and personal. Most people are not going to be that successful just doing it on their own. There'll always be some people who are going to be successful no matter what, no matter what you do, because they're so determined. Sure. And then there will be the people who are never going to get it because they're not putting the effort in. But in between are the people who you know, giving them the extra tools and support is going to make the difference. And also making sure you're not overwhelming people. So that's key for the course for getting the, you know, making sure your students are successful and also following up with them, keeping in touch with them, doing those follow up emails and checking in and seeing where they need help. So when you have a that level of success with the course, 
you're going to do better on the monetary side. And to, if you're not getting sales on that, um, the first thing I would look at is that list of people because email marketing is so important for me. You know, that's what I focus on. And you don't even have to have a course ready to go to start building a list and start, you yeah. know, having some sort of lead magnet, you know, some sort of gift that's related to your course, even what it could be a free mini one and um, doing the content marketing. Because when people are buying your course, they're buying your skills in teaching. And that's what you can show off in your free content that are going to get people onto your list. And then they're already experienced. They know you, they know you can teach and help them, and then they're going to buy your course. So that's where I would focus initial work on getting that list of people. And then there's the typical stuff related to sales page, your sales copy. You can always hire someone if necessary or learn the skills and improve your copy, making sure it's targeted and narrow enough and you're not trying to go for the whole world. You know, getting testimonials from student success, that's social proof, taking away any barriers to decisions like a good guarantee. Those are kind of the traditional sales copy stuff. And honestly, the pricing is the last thing. So I didn't even mention pricing because I found that, um, and this is something I found in my business too, in this whole PLR thing was pricing was not an issue. People kept, people try and keep lowering and lowering the price. And actually people were perfectly happy to pay higher amounts for mine because it, they could actually use it and sure. be successful with it and get value from it you know, and make more money as a result. So uh, those are the things I'd look at, the two prongs, whether your course is actually doing what you promise and getting results and then looking at the, the marketing side of things. Yeah. You know? Yeah. I love that. And I love talking about marketing. In fact, to the listener, uh, you can go to my website at onlinecoursecoach.com. And on the podcast tab, the videos tab, there's a search bar and you can search marketing. And we've, I've had uh, quite a few shows just about marketing, but you know, some of those that you just listed are fantastic. And I, I'm glad that you brought those up. Mm -hmm. So, uh, lastly, um, I know, you know, with your website, you have quite a few courses. So again, to the listener, I've created a special link where you can go directly to those courses at onlinecoursecoach.com slash content sparks. And that will take you directly to uh, Sharon's courses. But Sharon, tell me a little bit, you know, if, if you were to describe some of the, the courses and content you have, how would you describe that? Well, we're focused primarily on business coaches and consultants, but we do have a lot of other people. I just had somebody who's an embroidery coach um, who I was talking to the other night, but things are all on business topics. So there's a category that's uh, management and planning. So those sorts of business skills, there's a category that's sales and marketing. So there are, and there's a lot of subcategories of things like email marketing and content marketing and lead generation. So stuff like that. And then we have a category that's professional development. So that's not, there's a little bit of self-help type stuff, but it's really business skills and productivity, like time management and prioritizing and um, they have, have something recently on using social media for networking, for building your professional network. So stuff like that. And we're looking ahead now to also making sure everything fits together so that people can create a curriculum because a lot of our customers, you know, they want to not just sell one course, you want to sell multiple ones and always be a resource for your clients and for your customers so that they keep coming back to you. So we're looking at actually pulling those together into bundles of that make up a curriculum on different topics. Hmm, that's so really a good. membership that's really site, good. a resource library. You know, people are doing different things with the content, with their courses as well. And not just, you know, yeah. they're not just teaching them as courses. They're using it for, um, let's see, I was talking to someone last night in Australia because we've got customers all over the world. And he is using it primarily as resources for potential clients. So when he um, is trying to educate someone on why they need to do something or if they come to him and say, oh, I really want to learn about um, blogging rather than trying to sit down and do a course, which they don't necessarily want to hire him one on one for. 
he can give them a course that he's gotten from us and just customized a bit. So it's great. And yeah. then he looks like he knows about everything. <laughs> well, Sharon, I love the business model. I've loved talking with you. Mm -hmm. And so I, I, it's got my brain thinking. I know uh, when we first talked a couple of weeks ago through even today, uh, it's just got my, my wheels turning. And so I really appreciate you, you know, coming on the show here today, talking about not just your history and background, but also how it applies to the listener mm -hmm. and some of the strategies that you recommend. So thanks so much for being on the show today. Well, thanks for having me on. I hope that was helpful for people. You can always ask me more. It made me think a bit. <laughs> Well, that was a fun interview for me. I really like Sharon's business model. I love having people on that have unique strategies. Uh, it gets me thinking, and I really hope it gets you thinking about how you can create courses maybe that aren't even for your audience, or maybe your audience are different teachers, trainers, instructors, and they have their audience. And so there's different levels, and that's really why uh, you know what Sharon's doing in a way is my motto that I end the podcast with. You know, it's helping you to teach many to impact millions. Or you could say helping a few to teach many that impact millions. And that's exactly what Sharon is doing. She's helping her audience uh, that will teach their audience that will impact millions. And so I love that. So I hope that gets your uh, your brain going, your creativity going. And I would love to know, you know, if you're able to use a similar model to that. And don't forget, if you want to uh, learn more about Sharon, purchase any of her courses, you can go to onlinecoursecoach.com forward slash content sparks. That's an S at the end, content sparks, and learn more and check out her courses. And then don't forget on the resource page, onlinecoursecoach.com forward slash resources, there are different resources where you can um, learn, you can grow, whether it's uh, trying to improve your course videos or your marketing finding out which learning management system is best, WordPress tips. I have something specifically for authors. I have uh, three ways to grow your expertise, five ways to build an audience, and a case study about how an author, or excuse me, how a course creator went from concept to over $141,000 in sales in six months. Pretty cool. So those are the resources you can get at onlinecoursecoach.com forward slash resources. And then lastly, if you're like so many people that uh, struggle with creating those course videos, definitely check out Easy Video for Courses, where you can learn more, see if it's a good fit for you, and buy the course. So again, go to easyvideoforcourses.com. All right, well, we've got some really cool uh, interviews uh, coming up, as well as some specific topics that I'll be diving into in the coming weeks. So keep Coming back to the episodes, if you haven't subscribed, you definitely want to hit that subscribe button in iTunes or whatever podcast player you are using. So keep coming back to the show. I love doing these. I love helping you out because as I say every time, it is my goal with these podcasts to help you so you can teach many and that will impact millions.